Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us here today. My name is Steve Murray, the president here, Insurance Agency Marketing Services. The subject of today's webinar is we're going to talk about Social Security claiming with Coach Dave Pimper. It'll be a great webinar as always. This is a webinar that's got a lot of upside. There's a lot of great opportunities available right now in this space, and there have been for some time. It continues to be one of our better performing uh, opportunities to grow your business. Social Security knowledge, and Social Security claiming knowledge is really key to success in our uh, in our experience, uh, we know that clients will stay with you because you know about Social Security claiming and they will leave you if you don't. So good knowledge for you to have under your belt. We've also introduced seminars and digital workshops around it uh, as well. Of course, seminars right now are not very well attended for obvious reasons. Uh, so we haven't been advertising those. We've been converted to a digital workshop. So we're going to talk a little bit more about that. I want to get started with a couple of things. Here's some house cleaning details for you. Uh, number one, if, when polls come up, just answer them real quickly. Yes or no, you're not making any commitments. You're just letting us know if you have a level of interest uh, or not. And if you have any questions, go ahead and type them in and we'll, we'll get them asked and answered as quickly as possible. So let's get rolling here really quick. I want to let you know about a couple of programs that we have available. Many of you are aware of our market reimbursement and referred producer programs. Really simple. When you do business with IMS, we're going to go ahead and put money into your marketing reimbursement account. And you can use that. We'll match your spend dollar for dollar uh, when you go ahead and use that to promote your business. So take advantage of that basically double the value of your marketing dollars when you do your business with IMS. Also, the Referred Producer Program, this is, I'm just sending out checks on that. We do these on a quarterly basis. Uh, and so anybody that you think, if you have a colleague or friend you think might benefit from doing business with IMS, you refer them, we get them appointed, we'll send you out a check for 50 bucks. When they start to do business, that's when the money really starts coming and we pay you a bonus based on their business for as long as they're doing business with IMS. So it goes on forever and ever. Great way to increase uh, your uh, dollars coming to you uh, from, from IAMS without a lot of work on your behalf. We just ask you to refer colleagues. That's how we've grown our business, just like you have grown your business a lot through referrals. That's how we've done it over the years, last 34, 35 years. And um, hopefully you'll find that to be a way that you can grow your business through IAMS as well. I want to make sure you're aware of the new producer builders. a very simple program. When you do business with us in your first 180 days, you can choose the different levels. You can see what you can qualify for at the 100 all the way to the $1 million level. If you looked at that, you can see you can qualify to get yourself on radio, qualify for uh, us to pay for your seminars. Uh, you can qualify for a trip to the Ritz-Carlton with the guest of your choice, uh, all that good stuff. So a lot of things you can do there. Keep in mind that what that is applicable to uh, is folks that are with us and are doing their first business within 180 days of being appointed with us. Okay, great back office support here. Those of you that have done business with us know that all the way from case design all the way through to your commission. That's a big part of what we do and why we do it. I can't really sell it. I can't tell you about it, but people feel the IAMS difference. We're well known for that uh, in the industry for good reason. We do a great job at every step of the way. And of course, the back the cornerstone of that is just when you call, we answer the phone. So you're going to get a live body answering that phone every time. And if you, uh, you know, need the answer to a question or need something right away, it's great to know that there's going to be somebody picking up that phone and get you that answer. Uh, one of the things that we do here is we've got our own single sign-on for Firelight. And a lot of folks don't understand what that means. Here's the basics of it. When you go to the IMS website to do your eApps, what happens is you can access all the companies that you do business with through IMS on the annuity side through that one portal. So you don't have to go from company to company to company, which is a, a, it's easy for you, makes things a lot easier. It's the same information, same portal that all the companies use. But what's, what can be nice is that if you're doing business with two or three companies with one client, you know you can move that, that information from one to the next to the next without having to re-input that uh, in each separate instance of Firelight. So that can really save you a lot of time. Might be that you're going to do business with the same client three or four or five or six months or a year down the road. That information stays uh, in Firelight uh, with our carrier so or with any carrier that you're, you're doing that business with. So a nice little addition, nice little uh, opportunity. It's an easy thing to do. Call your uh, sales director and say, hey, send me the registration link or show me how to get registered with Firelight. It takes literally two minutes and then you're off, uh, off and running. I, I, frankly, over the next four or five years, I think most carriers are going to actually require that applications are at least highly encouraged, probably commission uh, driven, uh, that applications be done on an eApp platform. Uh, creative marketing, think of these folks as your own advertising team. Uh, basically, anything that you need to do to advertise their business, they've probably done it for another one of our producers. They're also going to do it at little or no cost to you. Uh, so uh, it's a great 
tool for you to take advantage of. And I know some folks don't maybe understand that because I see the folks that use it and then I see the group of folks that don't. If you're trying to build your brand, grow your agency, get your website, you know, get email platforms set up, get your Facebook marketing right, any of that stuff, I'm not saying that we can do it all for you, but we can certainly walk you through a lot of the pro a lot of the processes and save you a lot of time and get you lined up with the best practices and things that guys and gals do uh, that we know work uh, and help you with that. And obviously, any work that you need done, uh, we can help you with that. Whether you use your marketing reimbursement dollars or we're taking care of for you uh, at no cost, however it works, uh, we're, we're glad to assist you. And that's really uh, focused and very valuable assistance. Um, if you haven't looked at our website, I would encourage you to do so. That's where you go to register for Firelight. We've got our IM sales library. You can get your online quotes for life insurance. You can get online quotes for Medicare supplements. You can get uh, online quotes uh, for annuities as well. You can kind of look and see across the board and do some kind of ratings of annuity cares and products one-on-one. -on -one. A lot of tools out there that if you're not taking advantage of, I encourage you to walk, call your sales director and have him walk you through it, have he or she walk you uh, retirement Analyzer is a nice uh, tool that we use on a regular basis here with our with our producers and really uh, growing in popularity. And there's a couple reasons for it. Number one, I think people, it, just as time goes on, people begin to recognize more and more the value of programs like this and help you with the process of uh, walking your client where they through the uh, where they are on their retirement journey, whether they're short or long, whether they're overexposed to risk or underexposed to risk. A lot of the things that they need to know uh, to help. Uh, feel comfortable with where they're at. This can do it in a very graphic, very easy to understand process. We're making it available to our guys and gals right now at zero cost. So a pretty, uh, uh, if you went out to get it on your own, you'd be spending probably 70, 80 bucks a month. And the only thing that we ask is that you're using it regularly. In other words, we don't want to pay for it, have you get out and then not use it. So that's something you have interest in. Call Marcus Soller here in our office. Say, hey, Marcus, show me how it works. Maybe help you run one on yourself or a client and see how, if it's a good fit for you. We've got a great uh, wealth management team here. If you haven't looked at IAM's wealth management, I hope that you will. Uh, if you're considering getting in into the wealth management business yourself, um, or maybe you're already in it and you have a couple questions, or maybe it's not working for you as well. Here's what I'm finding in general about where IAM's wealth management has set themselves apart. They have better than average service for what everybody that's joined IAM's wealth tells me, you know, based on where they were in the past. So. We still run IMS Wealth Management from a service standpoint, much like we run IMS, kind of a service first organization, helping our guys and gals uh, through the processes and making sure it's easy for them. Uh, we're pretty good to it, helping folks that maybe are transitioning from an insurance only model to an insurance and investment type model, uh, because that's what we've done over and over again. If you're looking at getting your test, for instance, and you need some assistance walking you through that, uh, you know, getting set up, getting your paperwork, getting your books, getting you know kind of a process, a syllabus, if you will, set up. They can help you with that as well. But the real a couple areas that I, we're really seeing a lot of uh, assistance being provided and a lot of value being brought is with the the fee uh, opportunities. So right now, when you look at IMS Wealth in terms of the fees that they're charging, they're going to be lower than average and they're going to bring higher value than average. So you, your E and O comes out of their database website. All that's included in your fees, uh, and it's really relatively low compared to a lot of uh, uh, a lot of RIAs, and then the, our commission payout or fee payout is higher than most, not because it's, I mean, we're, we're like everybody else. It's like, you know, about 1% uh, is the fee that you can charge, but we do not run that 1% through a grid. So if you're currently getting 1% run through a 60, 70, or 80% grid, we can help you with that and get your payout to be a little bit higher, which can make a real bottom line difference in your business. So if you have interest in hearing from folks over time as well, management, simply check yes on that good to go there, not interested at all in, in making that part of your business, uh, please check no. I'm going to close that poll out here in just about 30 seconds, so I appreciate your quick voting if you would. If you're unable to vote for whatever reason, just give me a call here at the office, 800-255-5055. I'll be glad to put you in touch with the boys and girls over at IMS Wealth Management, and they can walk you through the process and see if it's a good fit for you. I think you'll find that if you're in the business, you're going to be amazed by their payouts and the, how low their fees are. If you're not in the business, I think you, you'll be amazed by how uh, helpful they can be in, in that process of getting you that Series 65 license so that you can get up and get in that business. So thank you for your attention there. I'm going to go ahead and close that poll out. Thank you for your quick response there. Certainly appreciate it. And I'm going to get moving along here. Um, 
so obviously we've suspended our annuity academies for the first half of the year. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to get one squeezed in, maybe one or two squeezed in before the end of the year. That still remains to be seen. Um, we will keep you uh, in the loop as those uh, uh, as those become available for you. Uh, if you if you would, uh, if you have the interest, all I'm going to do is ask you to just give us a quick call at 800-255-5055 and have them send you a sample agenda. And then if you're interested, send back the registration form. And that what will happen then is as we get closer to where we're able to start launching these and get people traveling in again, uh, we will include you on that list and get that out to you. So if you have interest in joining us for an academy, give us a call. We've got new and improved version for sure. So if you've been in the last year or two, it might be an opportunity this year or early next year to come into one of these meetings because we have added some some new stuff to our academy. So love to have you join us at one of those. Moving on here. So uh, by all means, give me a call if you have any questions. So uh, we're going to make some announcements on our uh, trip to the IMS Athene Marketing Summit uh, down at the Maz Taj in Los Cabos. We're going to do something there. We're, we're still uh, concerned a little bit, frankly, about traveling to Mexico this soon which brings us to our uh, top producers escape, which is gonna be a part of Arto, another Mexican destination early next year. As of right now, we, we're gonna to continue to offer that. And with that, it takes 3.5 million to qualify. Any business you've done with Athene and IAMS, you can account court towards that as well. So you're going to get double duty benefit from your, uh, for your travel uh, when you do business with IAMS with Athene. And of course, any business that you do with IAMS, whether it's with Athene or any of our carriers, any of our life carriers, annuity carriers, Medicare carriers, whatever, uh, all counts towards our producer summit at Port of Arta. It takes 3.5 million points to qualify for that. And we're going to have a nice tag on trip added to that here at uh, Putumita, Four Seasons at Putumita. Uh, it takes a minimum of 6.5 million. 8.5 million is instant qualification for that trip. We'd love to have you. Uh, hit those levels with us, join us for that tag trip. And those, of course, include you and your guest, and those will be in early uh, spring or late spring of next year. So I know I zipped through that rather quickly. Hopefully you've all been able to follow along. I want to get to the meat of the presentation here as quickly as possible. Dave, are you with us? Dave is in the process of getting ready to join us here right now. While he's getting ready to join us, I want to make sure that you were aware of uh, Dave's qualifications. So uh, besides being a regular producer in both securities and uh, fixed products and insurance, uh, Dave has also been uh, through Lazarus Coaching, been a regular uh, coach of our producers now for about the last 12 or 13 years. Done a great job uh, coaching on uh, practice uh, growth, uh, practice management in general, um, seminars around 401ks and qualified funds, uh, he's been doing a great job for folks on the social security side for about the past seven years. And then, of course, more recently, helping our guys and gals in into social security claiming and social security maximization in the digital world, uh, trying to convert a little bit to the inability to see people as easily face-to-face. -face. Now, some of that's going to loosen up. We're going to start uh, attempting to do some, uh, some of our face-to-face -face social security claiming uh, webinars as early as July and, and maybe breaking into that in earnest in August. Uh, but in the meantime, we've had some decent luck in the digital format as well. So uh, Dave will talk more about that. He's also going to let you know, of course, um, some of the costing around that. Mostly what we're going to talk about is Social Security claiming and how to grow your business uh, in the Social Security claiming, whether it's via seminar, digital workshop, or just uh, could be via radio or other means of letting people know, whether it's Facebook posting and things like that of your expertise, because there's no doubt that that can bring interest in your qualifications and interest uh, from clientele in your business to help grow your business, which is, of course, that's the goal here. Dave has had uh, 30, let's see, 1984, so 35 years of experience in the business. In that time, he's done a little over 500 seminars. He's been doing radio or has had radio experience for about the past 14, 15 years. The past two years, he has uh, been uh, promoting retirement boss radio, which we'll probably have at some point some opportunity to talk a little bit about today. The bottom line there right now is that to keep in mind for you all with us is that uh, the uh, show times 
are less expensive right now than they have been because of course radio is right now looking for uh you know revenue sources just like a lot of companies or a lot of a lot of businesses in this time of uh, social distancing and less advertising so um, they're a little bit more open to bargaining on their time and we're actually seeing better than average uh, uh response to radio advertising so we'll try and talk about that a little bit so uh, that's dave in a nutshell um so Dave always likes to say that uh, it's it's great to be wise yourself, uh, but if you can't, you know, surround your yourself with people that can help you, and he can, he's one that can help you uh, in these areas, whether it's social security claiming, radio, social security seminars in general, things like that. So, as Dave has uh, mentioned time, as I've mentioned already, Dave is uh, both uh, securities licensed. He's got a six sixty three uh, sixty five. 65 and a series 24. 24. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot. Hi, Steve. Hey, how are you? Baby? Yeah, it is. Good, good. How are you doing? Good, good. We've gotten good. off to a good start here this morning, and I wanted to, to get as quickly as we can to the heat of the matter, heart of the matter. So yeah. I've been kind of registering through or running through some of these things, and uh, but I'm going to move to the next slide. Are you are you okay to, to see everything? You're live? Absolutely. Perfect. Yep. Okay. Well, Make good. sure I can just – yeah, so this is – you know, we're going to be done here in about uh, 35 minutes. So um, about five, maybe about uh, five to the hour. So just let people know. And I think I hopefully am able to, to move this. I'll see if yeah, I can. Around. And there you I'm go. trying to here. There. Okay, good. Yeah, you know what? When you go on in and you take a look at the, the, the new SECURE Act, which started really kind of came on out at the beginning of this year. See if I can back up this up a little bit. And then disclosure. So the Secure Act. Um, yeah. So this is uh, uh, new stuff and, and 29 new provisions, uh, most sweeping change. You know, in our our uh, retirement code for years and years. One of the big thing is is the RMDs now are at 72 and not at 70, and you can conti con continue to contribute to the IRA if you have earned income after the age of 72. A beneficiary or inherited IRAs are gone unless you're the spouse. Now there's a 10-year rule that comes into play. So um, we go through this in the Social Security Workshop because it's brand new information and people that are kind of looking for that retirement years, it's important to them. Um, that 10-year rule, it's not called an inherited rule anymore. That's gone away. But the 10-year rule, you don't have to take out RMDs each year, but you have to take all of it out by the end of the 10th year, which is extremely important. And if you have any questions whatsoever, yeah, certainly um, just uh, type it in and we will answer those for you. Social Security workshops, um, and I know that it's been really uh, a big drag when it comes to workshop marketing here person to person because of the whole pandemic and with the COVID-19, but things are opening now. I see that we're we're getting people. We have one in Vermont. Uh, we have another one down south uh, that are, are opening up libraries or schools that were able to give workshops. Uh, we will uh, emphasize social distancing, um, you know, within the workshops themselves, and we put that on the flyer. But we've had a very, very good success. So remember, there's going to be a pent-up demand of people wanting to get out, learn about things that they haven't been able to learn about. So in the workshop itself, we ask about you know, what questions, what concerns do you have right now, you know, about you know, Social Security, knowing that there, there there certainly is going to be. Social Security started in 1935 by Franklin Delano Roosevelt. And um, uh, I will tell you that that uh, it's one of the more, which I think is one of the more amazing um, government programs. I think there's a lot of overspending and there's a lot of inefficiency, but there's certainly not with Social Security. In fact, Social Security, um, you've got over, um, you know, you've got over 99% uh, of the money goes out to the recipients. But it was started in 35. Interesting thing about the first check was in 1940, once they build up some reserves. 65 was the only age that you could take it back then. And actually, the interesting thing is the average age of longevity was only 62. So what a deal for the government. That has certainly changed in the last 85 years. In 61, under JFK, 
Um, they you could take it early, your benefit early at the age of 62, as early as 62 at a reduced amount, same way that it is today. And, and then uh, just a few years after that, they you could take it as late as 70, have an increased amount. Cost of living, annual cost of living increases happened in 75. There was no taxation until 83, but 83, uh, Ronald Reagan, Tip O'Neill got together and firmed up Social Security, started taxation in 93. Uh, there's a little more taxation put on by Bill Clinton. So there's been uh, quite a few different things that have, that have uh, been going on with Social Security. About 68 million people currently receiving Social Security benefits and about five and a half million took it last year. The average benefits a little over $1,500 a month or about 18000 a year. Is it a major source of income for most retirees? You darn right it is. Almost 60% of the people say that it's a major source of income. Now, when I'm going through those exact slides with my seminar uh, folks, do I go through a little bit slower? Yeah, there's no doubt that I go through a little bit slower. It's an hour presentation. If we're doing it online, like right now we got an online and 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 we're having some success. We've really had a trial and error the online of getting the appointments and writing the business, but we think we kind of figured that out. Probably we'll figure it just out right when everything opens back up for regular seminars again. But this is a real insightful slide, great information. This comes from USA Today from Jana Heron. Uh, July of last year, doing this one thing <clears throat> excuse me, with your Social Security could mean losing 100000 in retirement. So bullet point one, how much does claiming Social Security at the wrong time cost you? Bullet point two, retirees will lose an average of $111,000 in income per household over their lifetime. Why? because they took social security benefits at the wrong time. And then bullet point three, overall only 4% of retirees took social security at the financially optimal age. And then what I will say is, folks, that's why you're here tonight, or if it's virtual, that's why you're on the virtual seminar today, is to find out when is that best time for me to take my social security, not someone else's, but my social security, okay? If you have any questions at all, Certainly type them on in, and um, and we will answer those questions for you, okay? Now, you start to see more and more um, articles, you know, how to maximize your Social Security benefits. You know, um, you didn't see this type of article back 15, 20 years ago, but you certainly see a lot of them now. Social Security 101 is pretty easy. You got three dates or times, and everything starts from the full retirement age or the normal retirement age. So if you're born from 43 to 54, your full retirement age is 66. So let's just say and you can go all the way up to age 67, but that's where full retirement age is, 66 to 67. If you take earlier than full retirement age, you get the benefit now, but it's reduced. can be reduced as much up as if, 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 if you're full retirement age, but it can be reduced as much as 30%. If your full retirement age is 67 or over. And, and if you wait until 70 every year you wait, you're getting an 8% guaranteed increase on your income stream. So if you wait, it goes up. If you take early, you get less. And that's the basics of Social Security 101. Can it have a huge value? Darn right. Claiming at your right time, not the right time, but your right time to increase the value of your benefit. At a 2.8% COLA, which this year it's 1.6, last year was 2.8, year before 2%. Yeah, at 2.8% at a $2,000 benefit, in 10 years that 2,000 goes up to over 2,600. Pretty big deal. In 20 years, 3,500, in 30 years, over 30, almost $3,600. Inflation is a big, big deal for Americans. If you look at dollar amounts, accumulative, 10 years that same benefit with COLA, over 300,000. 20 years over almost two-thirds of a million, and in 30 years, $1.1 million from one single benefit. If you're not getting your, your benefit online, you should highly consider it. It's very simple. Firewalled out the yin-yang, very safe, 
And what happens is, is that you can, you can just, you don't, you don't get a paper statement any longer. If you don't go online and get it, you're supposed to get a, 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 a paper statement once a year. I'm not positive that is really the case, but you're supposed to. I've got five myths. This is the first myth. Is Social Security going broke? I heard my dad say, hey, you better save, Dave, because Social Security is never going to be there when, when you retire. So my question is, last year, do you think Social Security had a, a deficit or a surplus last year? Well, if you guessed a surplus, you are right. Three billion off of one trillion dollars worth of money coming in. A very small amount off of one trillion, but it did run a surplus. Are we in trouble? Well, the Social Security Administration, um, they just came up with information that said that somewhere between the year of 2033 and 2035, that the Social Security Trust Fund will run out of money. Because of the pandemic situation, maybe, maybe more people are going to take Social Security that are out of jobs, so it could fast be run down faster now, two or three years. There'll be a lot more information out that when they come out with the new information next, you know, after the first of the year. The Democrats probably want to tax a little more. The Republicans probably want to go in and raise the limits, the, the age limits a little more. There'll probably be some kind of compromise within that, too of how they're gonna go in and 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 uh, shore up Social Security so it does not go bankrupt the trust fund in the year of 2032, three, four, five. Means testing, the very bottom, it's gaining speed. If, if you make money in retirement and your income's a certain amount, they're talking about going on in and taking part of your Social Security away, if not all of it away, and giving it to someone who needs that money more. It's a redistribution of wealth. There are some people that believe in that. I don't personally. You know, you put into this and your employer put in for you for this as a perk. It should go to you, not to someone else. There's a lot of acronyms. My, my, my. Tons of acronyms. Um, 2,700 rules. Very hard to do it yourself to really find out the true facts. Is it a pay-as-you-go system? Yes, it is. It's 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 about 88% is paid by payroll taxes. About 88%. What? How does the other 12%? Well, like eight or nine percent of the other 12. Okay. How is it? How do they get their money? It's the interest on that trillion dollars. It's running at about three percent right now. It is they buy bonds, but then the government borrows against those bonds and gives them IOU. So that's really IOU to the government. Um, and it doesn't bother me one bit because what well, backs the currency in your pocket? The full faith and credit of the U.S. government. Same thing that backs Social Security. Okay. So it's not a Ponzi scheme. Ponzi all all Ponzi schemes go under before it's all said and done. Bernie Madoff did. I mean, um, um, all the all the Ponzi schemes in bad times have a habit of, of of really showing their cracks. This is not a Ponzi scheme, and the person who's borrowing is the entity is the U.S. government. Okay, any questions? Certainly, type them in. So, figuring out your Social Security benefit, yeah, you know, you got to go in. It's it's the earnings over your working career. The more you earn, the bigger your benefit is. And then at what age do you want to start your benefit? The earlier you start it, there's no doubt the less you'll get. You get it now, but you get less. So remember, you need 40 quarterly credits to go in with your Social Security benefit. 40 quarterly credits. Those credits, if you earn $1,410, okay, $1,410 in any given quarter, that is how much your quarterly uh, one quarterly credit, four of those you can earn in a year is $5,640. The more you earn, the bigger those credits are. And they take into account 35 of those credits over your working lifetime. This is not passive income. This is earned income. So that's either 1099, W-2 type of income upon working. And there is a cost of living. Every year, if there is a cost of living, there has been three years since 1975 where there hasn't been a cost of living increase. 2000, uh, 2000, 
five, six, and eleven. Got to go look that up for positive. I think that's what it is. Two thousand. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it's two thousand. You know, no, it isn't. It's it's 2016. So it's 2010, 2011, and 2016. I'm sorry on that. That's exactly what it is. 2010, 2011, 2016. No inflation. Don't you love that dog? <laughs> My favorite picture of all the slides. And he has a bone tie on. That's a little Nebraska humor. Yeah, full retirement age. Get the full benefit. If you're born from 43 to 54, it's 66. I was born in 55, 66 years and two months. 56, 57, 58, 59, 1916 later, 67. A newborn child today, 67 is full retirement age. If you're eight, if your full retirement age is 66, take a 62, gets discounted 25%. If your full retirement age is 67, gets down 70% at age 62. If you wait longer than full retirement age, you're guaranteed by the U.S. government to grow 8%. Is there any other kind of income investment that's guaranteed by the U.S. government that you can get a 8% guaranteed return on your money? Nowhere. Plus cost of living, interesting enough. So let's talk a little bit about spousal benefits. We'll talk about divorce benefits, and then we'll talk about survivor benefits. So first of all, spousal benefits. PIA, like days, PIA, PIA stands is an acronym for primary insurance amount. That's the amount at your full retirement age. I'm 2,400. Amy, my wife, is 1,000. We both claim. I get all of my 2,400. Amy has the option. She can take all of hers or half of mine, whichever is higher. What's higher? Well, half of mine. Half of mine's 1,200. That $200 is a top up. She gets her benefit of 1,000. It gets topped up 200. Done automatically. Don't have to ask for it. I'd probably verify they did it, but it, but it's supposed to be done. And most, by far, most of the times it is. So it's going to make very, very few mistakes on this type of, kind of benefit. Now, if Dave doesn't take, say he wants to let his grow to the age of 70, and Amy wants to take at 66, Amy can't get half of his. You can only take half of the spouse if they are taking. So that's real, real important, Okay. Divorce spouse benefit, we have a lot of divorcees, a lot of divorce spouses, and I'll tell you right now, there are a ton of benefits <clears throat> that are out there with divorce spouses that are not claimed. But here's the triple play on divorce spouse benefits. First of all, your marriage had to last 10 years or longer. Second of all, you're currently unmarried. And third of all, your ex is at least 62. And uh, what's interesting, I mean, you, you, divorce would have had actually there's a fourth one, but it had to it had been uh, done at least you'd be un, unmarried for at least two years. So there's really four things in there. But if those all add up, then you can use your spouse as if you're still married to them. Why is that a big deal? Because spousal benefits in general have many more options and alternatives than a single benefit. Okay? Very important. How about survivor benefits? Remember, you have to ask to get a divorce benefit. You have to ask to get a survivor benefit. The, 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 the spousal benefit, not the case. That's not automatically. But just like surviving, you know, they, they need to know when that spouse died. Okay? And I'll tell you, you hear about from time to time, you read about the paper, someone's collected a, a death benefit for us 10 years just because there was a mistake. You darn right, Social Security will claw that back, add all the interest to it, and, and can very well charge you, you know, with the felon for defrauding the U.S. government. So they, they will find out sooner or later. Absolutely never do that. So Dave's benefits 2000 Amy benefits 1200 Dave dies. And I, and I, I joke in the seminar, who normally dies first, the guy or the gal in a marriage? And they always say, the guy, that's so true. I say, you know why that is? Because he elects to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Dave, Dave's 2000 and he dies. Amy can either keep her benefit or she can drop her benefit and jump up to Dave's. Okay. So this was really put into play years ago. 
during the Great Recession, when there was about 75% of the women uh, that were single were in poverty. And so they could really help off of their survivor benefit if their husband had, had passed away. All right. There's a lady back, oh, it was probably 10, 12 years ago, right when I started showing Social Security seminars. <laughs> she came in from a workshop and she says, Mr. Pimper, she's like 15 years older than me. Mr. Pimper, you said in the workshop that if if, if one of the spouses dies, that you could jump up to that higher benefit. And I said, yep, that's right. And she said, well, I was told you couldn't. Just like that, she's getting very stern. I said, well, who told you you couldn't? She said, my brother. <laughs> so I always make a point to bring it up that I would say, don't trust your brother, your mother, your aunt, your uncle, your pastor, your priest, your rabbi. No, trust someone who knows it. That's why so many people sign up for the consultation because I know Social Security acclaiming inside and out. And that's why I tell them, okay? Coordinating spousal benefits is called restricted application. File and suspend was done away in 2015 over six month time period, but restricted application is still alive as long as you're old enough. You gotta be born before January the 2nd of 1954. January the 2nd of 1954. Okay, so you got to be 66 years of age or, or 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 a little bit older than that to go in and to apply. So how does restricted application work? Well, let's say Dave and Amy are both 66, and Dave's PIA is 2,400, Amy's is 1,000. Okay, same. Amy files for her because they want some money coming on in. Dave says, hey, I want to let mine grow. But instead of just letting it grow, which anybody can do and still can do it, He's uh, he's born before January second of nineteen sixty six of nineteen fifty four. He restricts his application. What that means is he's he's starting it in the eyes of Social Security, but he stops it. Well, now because the eyes of Social Security started, he can get a spousal benefit. So he goes in and takes half of Amy's. Half of her thousand is five hundred. Why his is growing the eight percent? It's kind of a loophole, but it's a great thing. Yeah, so he could get up to, you know, six thousand bucks a year, and if it was over four years, it'd be twenty-four thousand. So it's a big, big benefit. It's like Cinderella slipper. If it fits, boy, it just fits great. Social Security myth number two: If I claim Social Security benefits early and invest the income, I'll come out ahead rather than delaying. I'm telling you, I'm an investment guy, and that's almost always not the case. Where can you get a guarantee by the U.S. government of 8% on your income stream? Nowhere. Nowhere. Not with your investments, not with income riders. You can't do it. And I say 5 to 8% because that's what the, the gain is from 62 up to age 70, somewhere between 5 and 8%. If you throw coal in there, it's normally going to be 7 to 10%. Yeah, pretty big, pretty, pretty huge deal. Are there reasons to for considerations for taking early, you're darn right there is. You need the money. You're not in very good health. I mean, if you're not going to live to your late 70s, early 80s or late 70s, it probably isn't going to be worthwhile to, to, to delay it. You probably should take early. How about if you're you're in good shape, but the rest of your family's in bad shape? Yeah, you know, I always joke about how, you know, your three brothers have all died of lung cancer from smoking and you're in great shape, but you're a smoker. Well, you better probably think about taking early. I mean, maybe bad things could happen to you. Being uninformed, I actually did put being ignorant here, but I, I thought that was too strong. <laughs> but that's what you don't want to be is being uninformed. But if I would have only known that, I would have or wouldn't have done this with my Social Security. No, come in and see me. Come in and talk to me. Let me run you that 11-page customized report. shows you exactly what to take. That's the kind of language I use to get people to come on in and see me. There is an earnings test. So if you're under the age of full retirement age and you're making above $18,240, the Social Security Administration is going to take away $1 for every two. If you make above forty-seven, forty-eight thousand, it depends on your specifics, but forty-five to 50000 if you make above that, they're going to take away all of it. 
So it just really isn't worthwhile to take your money before you quit working and have your income under 18240 or wait until your full retirement age or later. Then the income earnings doesn't come into play at all. Now, you do get that back in a monthly stipend over your lifetime. So they take it out in, in one to four years. They pay it back to you in 20 to 30 years. So, and they pay it to you forever. But but they take it out fast. I don't give you any interest on it. Certainly, I wouldn't be doing it, you know, if my incomes were above those ranges. Social Security myth number three. You're going to get the biggest family benefit waiting to claim to age 70. Not so fast, Sherlock. No, that's not always the case. We figured out everything. And with my wife, it was a better situation for her to take early than it was too late. So we took it 62. Mine, different matter. I'm going to let mine grow, but not Amy's. Okay, not my wife's. We took it. Depends on the individual couple. Could it make sense or good sense to delay? Sure, it could. You can just see from taking from 62, waiting eight years, if you've got a coal of around 3%, your, your, your benefit will basically double in those eight years. Where can you get that from any guaranteed income stream? You cannot. You can't. Double in eight years. Now, here's what happens is, are there do-overs? Yeah, you darn right there is. If, if you go in and say, I made a mistake when you claim, you got one year to pay the money back, and that's any kind of um, spousal or, 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 or spouse, you know, getting the money, you got to pay all, everything back. You can do it one time and you can act as if you, you know, like it never happened. You just do it over again. What about if you get laid off from work at 62 and at 64, they come back and they want to hire you back, give you double the money. Can you go in and stop your social security that you started at 62? Nope, you cannot. You can't. You can once you turn full retirement age, but you can't before that. Not many people know that. And like that lady with that survivor benefit <laughs> that she said her brother told her, I get a kick out of it every time I tell the story. Um, yeah, what happens is is that we went back and there was she actually lost thirty three thousand. Or thirty thousand. She lost thirty thousand bucks, but we went back and got three thousand bucks um, credited because of the retroactive six-month benefit. Meaning you're over the age of full retirement age, and you just say, "Hey, oops! I mean, I should have done this. I wish I would done that. Or I, I, I would have do that now." You, you can go in and get paid for it going back six months. So that's really kind of a do-over, also. Social Security myth number four. Since beauty bond income is taxed in the provisional Social Security and uh, Social Security uh, calculation, then it only makes sense that tax-free Roth IRA income or distributions are taxed. Wrong, wrong, wrong. They are not taxed for Social Security. Muni bond is the provisional income for Social Security is adjusted gross income, not counting any Social Security. Half of your Social Security all of your muni bond interest. Nothing is said at all about tax. I'll tell you, and, and you should really consider doing a, um, you know, uh, a Roth IRA conversion. And because we, we probably aren't going to see tax rates much lower. I always ask, I mean, whoever's, it, whoever's in the Senate, Congress, House, um, um, I mean, judicial, where do you think tax rates are going to be in 10 years and almost every hand will raise higher? And believe me, it's a good time to Roth convert, especially because, you know, amounts are down right now. You know, accounts are down. Um, Got to make sure you're going to be paying taxation in, in retirement, but we're doing our share of quite a few of Roth conversions right now. Okay. Yeah, if you make under 32000 if you're married filing jointly, a provisional income, you don't pay any taxation on your Social Security. Okay. But if you're making over 44000 or if you're single over 34,000, you certainly are gonna pay up to 85% then. So reducing taxes on social security benefits, 
I use tax deferral. Not me bonds because they're tax, but tax deferral. Do a Roth conversion and go over into um, into a, a tax-free investment with, with a Roth conversion. And I love this. I put this in. Just delay your Social Security like I am. Reduces the number of years that benefits are subject to a taxation. A Roth conversion is something to look into now. Yeah, especially if your account's gone down in value. You know, if your account has gone down in value, what a beautiful time to go in, Roth convert that because it's a taxable event. Hopefully it goes back up, but now it's growing tax-free. All conversions, you have to wait five years to go in and to take uh, your 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 principal out. You can go in, I mean, your earnings out. You can go in and take your principal out at any time, your corpus of that uh, uh, IRA, uh, Roth IRA trust. You can do that at any time. It's the earnings that you've got to wait 12 years, or that is taxed then. Yeah. Yeah, just remember, there's no RMDs on Roth IRAs. Um, there is no taxation on Roth IRAs. There's no limit of the amounts you can convert on over. Yeah, it's just, just a, it's a, it's a pretty, pretty neat situation, still available. Myth number five, the Social Security Administration will give you the best advice on how to maximize your benefit. Folks, can you just see, if you're, if, if you're an advisor and you're watching this, we've got a bunch of people on board of this right now, but if you're an advisor and you don't really kind of understand the majority of what I'm talking about, how can the average person out there really understand it? They can't. Less than 2% of all people understand Social Security how to claim it. Less than 2%. Only about 10, 12% of advisors truly have a, a really good understanding. I got a nice count, 700,000 plus, and he came to me because his guy didn't know anything about Social Security claiming. And it was on it was on restricted application, and I knew the answer. Of course, I mean I, that's what we do. And, and I coach you, <clears throat> I coach you up on social security claiming so you understand it. I have not had any one subject make me more money than social security claiming. So what can and can't the Social Security Administration do? Well, first of all, what they cannot do, they cannot go in and give you advice. Is that wild? When I got in this business 10, 11 years ago, I called my lawyer, my CPA, and my banker. All of them had been in the business for 30 plus years, well well known in my little town of Fremont, Nebraska. I said, what do you do when someone wants advice? Do you, do you know it? Oh, no. We, we give them the Social Security Administration, who cannot give advice, by the way. They can only give you your highest benefit that, you, that you're entitled to right now. Who gives advice? Moi. We do. And that's why a lot of people sign up. Look at number D there under the Social Security Manual, under the program's operational manual system, their POMS manual system. Provide enough information so that claimants can make informed choices, but do not give advice. Opens up the door for us. Now, this leads into what I use to fact find, part of my fact finder. But I say consider all your income streams before you claim Social Security. And then I do go through each one of those. A lot of them I don't, but I say, you know, first of all, Social Security is not a standalone income stream. It's how it's complemented by your other three income streams or four income streams. Social Security is the most flexible of all your income streams, claiming at your right time, not the, but your right time is paramount. And don't forget about the survivor benefit. But here's the five pillars of income. We figure out their wages, their pensions, if they're fortunate to have it, income-producing assets like 401ks, IRAs, Roth, 403Bs, bank accounts, cash values, checking accounts, savings, land, sales, etc. cetera, four RMDs, now if you're 72 or more in your traditional accounts, and then Social Security. It's very interesting because some people look at just Social Security as a standalone. It's not. It's how it complements all those others. I guarantee you that it's not going to be um, talked about at the Social Security Administration office. So where do you go from here? I mean, what do I do? What do I do? There's so many things to think about. You got to go and you got to think about uh, your own benefit. That could be spousal, could be divorce, could be survivor, your health history, other sources of income. I say there's a lot to consider for your not the person next to you, not a boilerplate, 
but your best claiming decision. Now, folks, what I do here is I do a procrastination close. It's worked very well, not perfect, but it's worked very well for me. I believe people don't want to be procrastinators. They don't look at procrastination as being a good thing. And my whole thing here is get get off your keister. Do something. People who take action are the people who are most successful. I tell them that. There's a saying that says, procrastination is my sin. It brings me constant sorrow. I really shouldn't practice it. Perhaps I'll stop. <laughs> Tomorrow never comes, does it? Don't procrastinate. If you heard something in this, and I always say, if you heard something in this seminar, whether that's whether it's live or whether it's virtual, you know what? And you want to find out when the best time for you to claim Absolutely take action. What is Nike Shoe Company, the most profitable shoe company in the world? What is their slogan? You're exactly right. Just do it. That's their slogan, isn't it? Just do it. And then I go into the next slide. So I'll jump on the next slide. I'll say, you know, we have a no obligation, a complimentary appointment. Now, again, in this time, we might say about Zoom or phone but but most people in Nebraska, we're opening up, 100% of things are opening up as far as bars and restaurants. I just saw that yesterday. So we're one of the kind of those lucky states that was never a stay at home. I'm very, very different where you're at. But they're not going to keep libraries closed forever. They're not going to keep schools and retirement centers. They're not going to, and we're going to social distance there. If, you know, if they want to wear a mask, it, it, great. But but we say, you know, this they, they sign up for a day at a time um, time span, like like it's either early morning, late morning, early afternoon, late afternoon, early evening. They have all those different time periods that they can go in and sign up for. We call them back the very next day, you know, for that uh, appointment. We'll say, we'll pick those up when you, when you leave here and we're done. This is the last slide. And what I do, I go in I, and I do a George Foreman procrastination close. And it's, it, it, it leaves on a light touch. Well, so everybody knows who Big George Foreman is, right? Yeah, he beat Michael Moore when he was 45 years old to regain the heavyweight title, oldest heavyweight ever, 45 years of age, kept it until he was 48. And I'll say, Big Old George made a lot of money in boxing, but you know where he made the majority of his money? And someone will say the George Foreman grill. And I'll say that's exactly right. You can look it up. He made about $137 million, just one lump check, a little bit of stock with that. When, when he gave his name to the George Foreman Grill. Very wealthy. And then I say, so folks, as you're filling out that, that, that evaluation form to set an appointment, unless you have your name on a grill, you probably need to mark yes and come in and see me. <laughs> and then people laugh, or they might clap or applaud, and then we're done with, with the presentation. There's not a better subject out there than social security claiming, bar none. Nothing, I don't think there's anything close and it's going on forever because there's always about 10,000 people every year claiming social security. Steve, are you there? It's more than 10,000 a year, Dave. Did I say a day or a year? <laughs> did I, I say a year? You did, yeah. I meant, I'm sorry, 10,000 a day. So. I can't even put that many zeros as 365 something. <laughs> yeah, or 3 million something. Yeah, but there's a ton of people. 10,000 a day are turning 65, actually turning 62 or 3 or 4 or 5 or 6. So, so it's just going to keep on the baby boomers. They're, they they want information on what's the best time. So I think it'd be a good time to put up the poll question, Steve, if the folks would like to go in and get an appointment with me. And, and talk about social security seminars. Um, we certainly have not given up the fact, we, it, it's been a, it, it, Steve knows this, I wish we could have done this a lot faster, but it, it, we, we're on to something now with virtual seminars. We may be using this as a lead generation source for, for years to come, but but once you can get, and you can talk face to face and you get people to, 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 to see you face to face, that that is kind of the mainstay of this and, and, and we always have before given a guarantee that you will get um, um, at, at, at least um, uh, X amount of people to the actual 
um, seminar itself. And so, Steve, I know that we're going to be reconnoitering on that, but we'd like to give a guarantee of some of some point because most companies are not most companies that do seminars now are not giving any kind of guarantees, and we'd like to be one of the few that still that still does that. Yeah, and you know, you and I both agree. I think there's a way to do that, and you know what the future might hold is going to be a combination, I think, of some type of a digital uh, learning opportunity for clients, followed by, uh, let me get some more information, followed by a phone call, and then followed by a face-to-face -face appointment. I, I think people are going right. to get deep where they're fine with having face-to-face -face appointments. And frankly, I think there there's still going to be plenty of people that are fine with uh, you know, meeting in a, in oh, a I agree. seminar, as long as you're- I agree. Good stuff, so. Um, yeah, no, I agree. I think and I think that, you know it's kind of the phasing in of America. It's the phasing in of just people feel comfortable of getting out. I just flew, as you know, I just flew down south on a little kind of a business fun trip, and and with Southwest Airline, they didn't have any of the middle seats that were that were open, so they were all closed. But both going down and coming back, packed. Mm -hmm. Every seat was taken. Every seat was taken. Now the middle seats were open, but everybody was wearing their mask and. I mean, you know what? But, but it was it was pretty much business like normal. And Hartsfield Airport, where I flew in, I mean, our Epley was. I think uh, we could certainly see that there was less people. But Hartsfield, my gosh, it seemed like there was a lot of people there. So I don't know if they had 50% capacity or 60, but but it, the media makes it sound like there's no one there, and that that just isn't the case. So so things are are starting to open back up again. Yep. 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 So Dave, there's a couple questions here. Maybe you can. I know you've got some. Uh, an appointment to get to, but when you can you walk people through um, the costing of what we're seeing on the face to face, just real quickly, because I know we're going to get back there very soon. But it, there are questions too on the digital workshops and kind of the what the expenses associated with the digital workshop are. Can we can we do both just real quickly? Yeah, you bet. So when you say digital workshops, Steve, are you talking about ones that we actually are going virtual or meaning Facebook advertising on a on a face to face? Uh the virtual workshop cost. Yeah. So twenty five hundred dollars and we're going in, we want to be able to have at least from a guarantee standpoint, at least forty people who sign up for that for that digital workshop. Forty people who sign up. And I'll tell you what happens is is we've got a a really cool system. It's an on-demand system where, where where it's recorded, so you don't have to go in. We've done it all different ways, but we're really having some good success with this. And, I, and I'll tell you right now, if you're thinking about getting into the seminar business or getting back into the seminar business, certainly don't let it hold you up that you can't get into that facility because we're seeing some good success. It's a different way, a little different way of marketing it. But it is, uh, we've really ironed out the bugs on it, and our vendor has worked very, very hard of getting it to work. So, uh, that, but the cost is going to be 2500 The guarantee should be, is going to be, we'll get at least 40 registrations that, 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 that register for that, that workshop. And what we've seen, just, and I don't mean to interrupt you, Dave, but from our competitors, what we're seeing is thing is costs like more in the, 4,000 range yep. and three to, to 4,500. Yep. Yep. And they're usually only doing maybe 1,500 of that towards the advertising part of the campaign, which we're far exceeding that and far in our total costs less. So what we're talking about is probably the more, the more efficient model for the producer in the field. And for obvious reasons, we are, our, our goal is not to make money from uh, lead generation, but rather to make money from uh, working with producers because they are being successful and so that's our goal and so that's the reason that um, and, and I'd, I've, I've used this analogy to Dave a number of times sometimes it feels like lead generators are like vultures circling around us you know they just want to pick away at us because they know that that's something that especially right now that we're looking for different ways to get in front of people and so they can take advantage of us um, so we're, we're a partner in this we're not uh, our our goal is exactly the same as yours is to get you in front of people on a favorable basis to talk about the things that you want to talk about as efficiently and cash efficiently efficiently with your time and cash efficiently as possible so that's that is the difference and Dave and his team have really done a great job in in uh, bringing that about so sorry for interrupting you there Dave no not a bit not a bit and I'll, I'll tell you what happens is 
Understanding Social Security, with this also comes Social Security coaching for myself. You get three 45-minute sessions of really learning Social Security. If you're working with the pre-retired or just retired uh, 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 demographic and you really don't understand the ins and outs of Social Security claiming, um, shame on you. I mean, you absolutely should. I mean, it's 60% or 59% of all Americans said that Social Security income plays a major impact. You know, uh, uh, you know, when, when you look at their wages and pensions, 401ks, yeah, Social Security is a it's a big, big deal for most people. And I'll tell you right now, I just met with a guy um, over three million dollars worth of investable assets, and the only reason I got to talk with them is because uh, this happened to be from radio, Steve. That happened to be from retirement boss radio, but he, but we we talked and we met, and I mean we got a second appointment. But he said I I really did feel like you had so much more knowledge on Social Security than my current advisor. Wow, what a big deal! And and as I said before, I don't think I I know I know I've never had a subject that has that has truly help more clients and for me to make more money than anything than, than Social Security claiming. So I teach it and I answer all your questions and we've got great things to read. And and it really, of course, the more than you actually propose and you actually do the the software, which is a free software, Social Security software for three months. I mean, we, we really, we encapsulize yourself with all of the information for Social Security claiming and the education to get you up and running. It's very, very important. If you don't have that, yeah, it might be worthwhile to mark yes. Um, and we're getting some pretty good response. We're still waiting for a few people, though, but we've gotten some good response. And yeah, mark yes, and we will certainly, if you don't want to, then mark no. And then, and then we certainly, you know, we won't talk, and that's fine. But if you mark yes, let's do And Let's talk about how you can not just take that education of understanding and learning Social Security, but then actually making a good living from that by giving advice and then uncovering assets. That transition, and that was tricky, really understanding how to go to Social Security and then into the actual investment sales. So I have a good transition program, and I walk you through everything that I do step by step. It's an A through Z system, and I certainly would like to go in and see if you have the, you know, there's a little bit of studying for it, a little bit of working for it. There's some coaching sessions for it, but that's all covered in that $2,500 um, um, for the for the seminar system itself. Well, and Dave, the uh, I have seven people that haven't voted, and three of them have the exact same question, which you just answered, uh, and it probably deserves a reiteration: is <laughs> how much does the coaching cost? <laughs> right, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. The coaching, I mean, it's included in that twenty five hundred dollar price. I'm I'm not in your hierarchy. I don't. I'm not in a in an override situation. I mean, I get stipend by IAMS, um, uh, but I, as we know, there's a lot of people that I talk to, and and the most important thing here is to coach you up, and that's all part of the system. So uh, we're going to kind of we're going to close this down because we're a little past the time. Steve, is there any any last questions that we would need to touch base on? You probably let the people know how many coaching sessions that you do in association with. That's the. the Time commitment is a, another question that's come up here a couple of times. So for, right. for coaching, you usually want to talk to them, what, three or four times? Three times. So we will go and we'll actually talk the first time. Then then, then we set up the coaching, um, you know, and then we, we'll set up a time for the seminar, albeit uh, virtual, which we're doing right now. Or it could be some places are opening on up, you know, with libraries and community centers and so forth. Uh, uh, there is a sales process track, um, not mandatory by any means, but really understanding of what to absolutely say from the very first time that the person comes in from the Social Security workshop or you're on Zoom, the questions that I ask, the fact finder, the transitioning, all that information, that's a la carte, and I charge separate for that. Not mandatory, but a lot of people look at the, you know, we're talking hundreds of dollars, not thousands of dollars for that. So it's reasonable. I, our whole goal here is get you a, a, as much firepower as you possibly can have around Social Security that enables you to write business and, and give, give the right answers. Very, very important. Very tons of FMOs have Social Security workshops. Very, very few, if any, besides IAMS, has a relationship of having a coach 
that actually one-on-one coaches you. That's that's the, that's the specialty, and that's what's different. And the reason you have it, Steve, is because you know it works, right? That's exactly right. And that's Dave's really long way of saying coaching's free. <laughs> it is. <laughs> yeah. For them, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it co- it costs you a teeny bit, but it's free for every advisor. Absolutely. Yep. yep. So it's a good deal. Uh, we've got a couple that haven't voted. I'm assuming at this point that's probably because they are unable to vote. So if you have some questions here or uh, the reason you can't vote is a technical difficulty, give me a call here at the office, 800-255-5055. Uh, glad to chat with you if you have questions uh, or if you need me to put you in touch with Dave and his team at Lazarus Coaching, I'd love to do that as well. Uh, again, we're all built here at IMS Round making your business go. Our success is, is dependent on your success. We know that. And so we get up every morning and start every day uh, with you know, how do we how do we help the producer in the field? And that's helped us be successful for the last 34 years. And I don't see that changing for the next 34 years. So if you're looking for a team that's uh, interested in your success and finding ways to help you get where you want to be, uh, give us a call and let us help you. Dave is a big part of that. Dave's done a great job with coaching now with us, as I mentioned at the outset, for 12 or 13 years. And we've had a lot of guys enjoy a lot of success that I don't think they otherwise would have uh, without uh, you know, spending some time with Dave. So, Dave, thank you for your time here today. As always, sure. we really appreciate it, uh, taking some time out of your schedule. I know your appointment schedule is pretty full right now. Uh, and thank you all out there in the field uh, for taking some time. We put a lot of... Uh, Put a lot of credence in the folks that are willing to take some time out of their schedule to learn a little bit more about how to do better for their clients. So anything we can do to help you, to help you grow your business, uh, the team here at IAMS is, is ready and willing uh, to do so. So thank you for your time uh, as well. Have a great finish to your sales week. Uh, you know, uh, I'll wipe down your area regularly. I'm wiping down this area right now as we speak, if you can believe that. <laughs> and uh, thank you, Dave, for your time. Anything you want to say you as bet. we finish up? No, thank you very much for taking time out of your day today. Hope I can talk to a lot of you and get some ideas about marketing. And maybe there's a fit here for you going forward. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.